everybody, and welcome to Diving Deeper, today's Bible study as we go deeper into the book of Hebrews and all that God has for us as we've been going through this Only Jesus series on Sunday. You know, I love these times, not a, not a rehash of Sunday morning, but a deeper teaching, you know, often a, just a little behind the scenes in, in preparing a message and figuring out what you're going to teach about and talk on. Some of the hardest part is cutting things out. Having points or, or thoughts that are, oh, it's so good, but it's just, it doesn't quite fit or it's not the exact right direction or, or just the clock is going to keep going and so you don't have enough time. And so that's what we love about these diving deeper sessions is that it's not, not just a rehash of what we talked about Sunday. It's not like we're just going to keep on redoing this. Instead, it's actually something completely different and really usually something we really wanted to get to talk about on Sunday, but we just, we didn't get to, we couldn't make it happen. And so uh, I don't know what that is for tonight, but I'm sure that Pastor Kim, Pastor Jamie have got some great stuff carried in for us tonight. And I am so excited for you to get to hear it and receive it. So it's going to be great. Uh, it's our, our Bible study, Diving Deeper, and we are so glad that you are here. And just so you know, a few things that are coming up. Uh, we have got our Thursday night drive through dinner church. So we'd love to invite you out if you haven't been serving yet, but you're going a little stir crazy, ready to kind of get back engaged, but want to know that what you're doing is really worth it. It is really worth it to join us on a Thursday night uh, because there is so much good stuff going on. You were here from about two to six serving. We're cooking meals. We're giving out free hot meals, free frozen meals so that people not only get one meal, but a second meal and groceries that they can get. So there's lots of ways that you can be engaged in serving our city. And we would love to invite you to join us tomorrow. Come out anytime between two and six or give us a call at the office or comment uh, here in the video. Let us know and We'll make sure we've got space for you. Uh, it is a great way to serve and be with us. Uh, also on Sundays, you know, you're uh, keep the volunteering thing. You're welcome to serve on Sundays. There's lots of great spots to uh, be a part of there. And uh, we do those things safely and, and all that. But we'd love to invite you to join us serving. But I was going to say, just come attend. Be a part. Whether that is drive-in church, in building or online, three different options for you. And those are across three different times. I'm sure you know them. But I'm going to just say it again because I've got to fill five minutes of talking before Pastor Kim and Pastor Jamie are here. So Sunday mornings, 8.30 a.m., drive-in chapel and online church. Love to see you in either spot there. You can drive in, stay in your car the whole time, or watch online. And then uh, 9.30 and 11 a.m., we are in building and we are live online, Facebook, YouTube, and our website. So great ways to stay up with us and be a part of all that the church has going on and, and everything that we're doing. So we'd love to invite you to uh, make sure you're there with us on Sunday as well. I, I will give you a little hint um, beforehand. But Zach, what, what day is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. And what are we doing? Bible study. Bible study. That's what you're doing. I'm not here right now. I filmed this early. I am out of town because today it's my birthday. So, Zach, your birthday was a few weeks ago. I got you some cookies. Yeah. You, you have nothing. <laughs> nothing! Come on now. So, Zach is in the comments. Make him work. Say, hey, yell at him for being mean to me since I'm out of town, not, not giving me anything for my birthday. No, I don't care. Uh, it, it, we're filming this like two weeks in advance, and I told him nothing was about this. So, it's all good. Hey, uh, welcome to Diving Deeper Bible Study. Those of you who have just joined us, uh, Pastor Kim and Pastor Jamie are going to be here shortly. Uh, we got about 30 seconds till we start. So go quick, run, jump over the couch, do what you got to do. Grab a journal, grab a notebook. Don't forget the pen. Grab a, a refill on your coffee or, or Coke or whatever you're doing uh, to, to have a drink while we're doing this. But we want to be able to be focused and with our pastors because they're going to bring you some great teaching right now. I'm so excited for you to get to hear from them, receive from them because they have spent time planning and pouring into this and you're going to be really blessed. So have a great time. 
I hope you're enjoying our Hebrew series as much as we are. We uh, Kim's been pushing me for a long time, wanting to say, "Why are we going to do the Book of Hebrews? When are we going to do the Book of Hebrews?" And and uh, I kind of just thought that was you being interested in it, but mm -hmm. I think God was interested really? in it. Really? Yeah. And it's really been challenging. Uh, you know, we talked about the blood of Jesus. You know, it doesn't get talked about much in churches. They sort of shy away from it. We don't sing about it. I'm grateful Charles, uh, Pastor Charles wrote a song yes, about uh, the blood of Jesus. And so, you know, I, I just, uh, we're not afraid to talk about uh, the things that redeem us. Uh, how do you have faith uh, and salvation without the blood of Jesus, our new covenant that we've talked about, that it's sealed, ratified in his blood. And so we've been talking about the new covenant and the, the, how Jesus as the high priest, he has a, a brand new covenant that he's made with us. And, 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 and then he's going to talk about, you know, obviously the, the blood that we talked about, the, the new sacrifice uh, that fulfills all sacrifices. Now he's going to talk about a heavenly temple. He's going to contrast it, the writer of Hebrews, with the earthly tabernacle and the Old Testament. We're going to be in uh, chapter 9, but, you know, I know that you've always enjoyed uh, that it's always been. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah I've, I've loved the tabernacle. When I first got saved, it was like one of the first things I read about, and it was so neat to see that every, almost every part um, has a representation of Jesus. It's a type of Christ. It was God's way of showing what was coming and what was required of us and what was required of the Lord. And so I really loved, you know, here's this big, huge tent out in the desert, you know, with, with dark skins on it, but all the furniture inside and all the pieces inside all represented the things in the, the ministry of the Lord and the Father. And it's just, it's so exciting to read. Yeah, and yet you can read over it and miss it all and just think, well, those are just different pieces of, Furniture it's and this history and, book, and, just history book and <laughs> this was their ritual and and but when you begin and it's the same principle with the whole Old Testament and this may help you as we study through uh, the the tabernacle uh, is that you can make these same applications to whether it's David killing a giant and you see the power of Jesus overcoming giants or Jericho they marched around the walls you you, you begin to see Christ in everything uh, in the Old Testament because the, the New Testament, is it, that's the whole, it, the New Testament was in the Old in seed form, but it's been fully revealed, the Old Testament, by Jesus fulfilling every part of it. Mm. And so we're going to read uh, in chapter 9, uh, the book of Hebrews, follow with me in verse 1. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary, a tabernacle, which is a, a tent, a uh, big giant. We're not talking about the temple that was made later. This is the tent, animal skin, tabernacle that was set up. In the first room, there, there's these two different rooms uh, inside the, the, the perimeter of this tabernacle. Uh, there's these two rooms. Um, the first one had a lampstand and a table with consecrated bread. This is called the holy place. And behind the second curtain, so there's a curtain to enter the holy place, then there's a second curtain. It's often called the veil, and it will here in a minute. The second curtain on the other side was a room called the most holy place, or the holy of holies. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had the golden altar of incense and a gold-covered Ark of the Covenant. This Ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the Covenant, the Ten Commandments. Verse 5, above the Ark were the cherubim, they were angelic beings, cherubim of glory, of the glory, overshadowing, the, this version calls it the atonement cover, or Mercy seat is the literal translation. It's the gold lid of the ark, the mercy seat. And it, it, but we cannot discuss these things in detail now. 
When everything has been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner, that holy of holies, and that was once a year, never without blood. That blood we've been talking about uh, that's represented uh, and all these sacrifices pointed to the one offering, which was Jesus. Never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people and had committed that they had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was standing. So why the tabernacle? Why do you, you know, he, he could have used the temple because these are people that were familiar with the temple, more permanent. Why do you think he, he picks the tabernacle to, to unpack kind of as a pattern or patterned upon the heavenly? So these, all these things we're going to look at are shadows or pictures of what is represented types, yeah. in, in the truth I, in I, heaven. Well, obviously, though, I think the main obvious thing is the fact that it was a dark tent. There was nothing glorious about looking at it. It wasn't like it was beautiful and polished and like shining, the other nations, like the other shrines. nations, shrines or the temples or whatever. And so it, it, that's just a clear humble. picture, a humble picture of what, Christ came as as our Lord. He came as a, and a, took on a body, which why would God, the God of the whole universe, the creator of the universe, take on an earthly, weak body? Which and, he called a tabernacle. In John 1, 14, it says the word was made flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among, among us. us. Yes. Basically, you know, this tabernacle and the old is seen in the new, in the body yes. of Jesus. That's a, it's a, it is. That's a great. It, it's from the eye. You look at it. It's a, it's a tent. Well, in the, Old Testament. the 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 Jewish people uh, couldn't receive the the Son of God due to the weakness and the frailty of. They his, stumbled over. They stumbled. It. Yeah, over his his how he showed up. This isn't what we were going to bow down to or what we thought was coming, our Messiah. And so God was making a, a clear representation back in, then. Because inside, the, the, on the outside, there were nothing to look at, but on the inside there were these beautiful colors and majesty on the inside of the holy place and the holy of holies. But this tabernacle is also called the tent of meeting because it's where they went to meet with God. It was a place of sacrifice and worship. It's interesting. Before we we're gonna we're gonna go through five or six pieces of furniture in there. But the writer of Hebrews, he's not stupid. He knows or she knows every bit of the Hebrew history and the yeah, there tabernacle. There's the whole outer court. There's the outer there court other that he doesn't reference. Yeah. And in that outer court were two things: the the the, the, the altar, brazen altar, brazen altar, and the and the laver. And, and the altar is where you washed the, with the laver was the where you were, did the washing and the cleansing, which but is the first purification. they would kill the animal, yes, and they'd cook him on this big altar, and then they'd clean up. Then they would go into the holy place, where you have the candle and the bread, the table, the incense uh, in there, and then the holy of holies went in once a year. Why does Hebrews? Why does he? Why does he talk about? Because it represents Jesus. Well, why would he? Why would he, would he leave, leave out? that out, or you know, she leave that out? Yeah, it's it's um, a remember sometimes silence. Mm, it's golden. It, it, it's golden, <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's it says more than if you said something. Yeah. Like why? Remember when we talked about Melchizedek. There was no mention of him giving bread and wine to Abraham. The writer of of this uh, Hebrews leaves that out, and and now there's another glaring uh, part of the furniture left out. And, and there's nobody that can tell us why, but because of the overall emphasis, we were talking about this. Well, give them some of your, your oh, thoughts. Just some film. of my thoughts. Earlier today, I was thinking, we were talking about it, and I said, I really think that, you know, the, the sacrifice, the altar, and the washing, that had already happened. In that, Christ. And Christ. And so when you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've been washed, you've been cleansed. And, and I think in Hebrews, it's, it's 
maybe the author is thinking about, you know, I'm not pointing so much to salvation right now because you're standing in that. I'm writing to you as believers, going through a hard time, struggling, maybe turning back. But what he's focusing on is the priesthood of the believer. What's going on what's now. What's going on now in, in that tent. Yeah, because they, they were being tempted to go back to the old sacrifices. Yeah. And as we've talked about in chapters 9, and then again we'll cover in chapter 10, the Jesus' sacrifice, has it's done once for all. The, the light's still shining. We'll talk about that in the candle. The bread's to, but but I think it's I think you're right on. I think as they say in South Africa, spot on. You're spot on. <laughs> I think the he's saying or she that 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 you don't need to focus on the brazen altar, because that sacrifice has done been done once and all. There's no more that's going to go on there. Yeah. In fact, just a side note that there are people that teach that someday in Israel they're going to rebuild the temple and reinstitute sacrifices and somehow that God would be in that. They, these are mm -hmm. people that don't know the New Testament. Mm -hmm. they, they say they do. They're, they're believers. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they're not believers, but Hebrews is really clear that there's one sacrifice once for all and Jesus has satisfied forever. Yeah, we're not going back under the we're law. We're not going to ever go know? back under killing animals. And, 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 so, and so he leaves out this, these two pieces of outside the the, the holy place and the holy of holies, he leaves those out to say, let's focus on what's Jesus doing right now in the presence of God. Remember, we've been talking about he ever lives to make intercession. Let's find Jesus in simple pieces of furniture. He starts number one, and in, in verse two, the tabernacle set up, which let me just mention, I, 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 I'm reminded the temple was stationary, obviously it's permanent building until it was torn down, but the tabernacle moved. It moved with them. As the cloud moved, they'd pack up the tabernacle and they'd move and follow the cloud and the fire. And it was portable. It was, it was transitory. It, it speaks much more of us as pilgrims that are just passing through, that we're looking for a better land. We're looking for a better temple, if you will, a sanctuary in heaven. Uh, uh, so I think the transientness of the is better illustrated, and that's why he chooses it or she. Um, so the first item when you walk into the holy room, the only reason it's it's shut, no windows, covered over. You open the the curtain, you walk in. The priest does, and how is he able to see? There's light. There's light. Yes. There's, there's light. The candles. There's a candlestick, and that candle is, I mean, such an obvious picture where Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I am the light of the world. I mean, you can't, you can't see anything. Ministry goes no further mm -hmm. without the candlestick. Mm -hmm. You know, John and Revelation, it, it says Jesus was walking among the candlestick. I mean, he's, he, he, he is the light of the world. And I just, I love the fact that with Jesus will never be kept in darkness. Mm. He's the light. Mm -hmm. He's the candle. Now, what did they have to do to keep that candle going? Well, they had to constantly uh, um, tend to it. Tend to it with the oil. Yes. So there's a whole imagery of the Holy Spirit there. Yes. Uh, oil and the, the light. It, they had no electricity, obviously. It wasn't wax. It was an oil uh, lit lamp. And they, they never let it go out. They never let it go <laughs> out. So the light so the witness of the candlestick is that he's the light of the world. The light never goes out, and we don't walk in darkness. The second piece that they find in there is this table with 12 loaves of bread. We know that from Exodus. If you read uh, uh, Moses has been given the instructions by God, but he has this table with 12 loaves of bread. So what do you think of now at the table? Of the, it's called the show bread or the bread of presence. Mm, the bread of life. The bread of life. And again, John, the gospel writer, brings out more than anybody, Jesus said, I'm the living mm -hmm. bread. Mm -hmm. that, but, but what happened to that bread in there? That they, when the bread started getting a little, a little older, the priests were allowed to eat it. They fed on it, which is another beautiful, but they had to eat it in the holy place. They couldn't 
take the bread out and go eat, you know, somewhere. They had to eat the bread in his presence. In the presence of the Lord, yeah. What does that tell you? What does that draw you into you about the Jesus? The word of God, Jesus, his spirit, yes. Feeding on him, mm -hmm. you know. you Our you, life, yeah, sustaining. And, 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 and what would it be like to eat the bread out of his presence? It would be tasteless. It would be, it's meant to be communion with him, mm -hmm. the bread of his presence. It's, he's the living bread. We feed on him, not through the written word, but through the living written word. We feed on him through God speaking to us. The light shines on the bread. The priest eats. They make new bread, 12 loaves, one for each tribe. They make new bread, fresh bread. You can imagine the, the smell. The aroma, yeah, oh. it's probably wonderful. What do you think Jesus smells like? Mm. Whatever he smells like is something that would make us hungry for him. Mm -hmm. now, I, I love the smell of fresh. One of the worst things you ever had was, or was that was Bob that got that, and he said it's the worst thing his wife ever bought him, or got him, is they got an automatic bread machine. Oh, they yeah. They could set it on overnight and <laughs> wake up and smell fresh bread. He said he gained 10 pounds with that bread machine. He said it was evil. You know, just put the recipe in, you tap, yeah. you know, and then, boop, boop, boop. yeah, he said he had to get rid of it because yeah. he was waking up every morning. <laughs> fresh bread. Fresh bread oh. and just what a, you know, but you think about the, the light in that and the smell of fresh bread. I, I, I think of the aroma of Jesus is that presence of God the, that, that makes us hungry for more of him mm -hmm. uh, in the temple. Now, the, 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 the writer of Hebrews talks next about, uh, in verse 3, uh, that, that behind the second curtain or the veil, there's a golden altar of incense. Some argue, and there's, in, in the Old Testament, it's spoken of more that the table of incense is in the holy place, not the holy of holies, not on the other side of the veil. And so, and I'm sure it could have been brought either place, but some think that the altar of incense, hot coals, burning incense, but there are also canisters or the, that they called, uh, I can't think of the name of them now, but they were, they were uh, incense burned, that you burned incense and you held them. You, You've seen maybe the Greek Orthodox tradition. Uh, they're always swinging the, uh, and, the, the and the incense is sensors. Got the, sensors. That's the word I was looking the for. The aromas coming out. The of aromas it. Yes. coming out. Now, whether it's on, I tend to believe it's on, you know, uh, uh, both sides uh, because this aroma was. It, it's what we've been talking about about the priesthood of Jesus, about His intercession. You. you Praise and worship, the smell, the, the, uh, the, 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 in fact, the book of Revelation talks about prayers being kept mm -hmm. and, and as, as uh, you know, censers filled with prayer of, of contained in them and that, that God's going to hurl them and you know, break them upon. And it's just this explosion of aroma, of smell, but it's representative of prayer and worship. So it's, it's a place of worship and Jesus being our high priest in his prayers, which makes way mm. for that high priest. And which to the Father, Jesus was that sweet smelling sweet smell. fragrance, that aroma, that incense to him that pleased him with his sacrifice and what he did. So now we're in the holy place. The priest is in there, he's eating the bread, standing in the light at the presence and the, and the incense is it's going. Now, remember once a year, they were allowed to go through the holy place, the veil. But we know in the New Testament that when Christ died, the Bible says the veil was rent from top to bottom. Now that was in the temple. I mean, it was, it was a number of feet, several feet wide. It was such a thick curtain. Yeah, no man could tear it. And it was no one, it was it be impossible for a human to tear the curtain. But when Christ died, and, and, and the Hebrews is gonna go on, we'll talk about later, that it, it compares the veil to Christ's body. So as his body was rent on the cross, the veil was being torn yeah. in the temple. When he died on the cross, everything went dark, remember? There was dark. There was earthquakes, everything went dark, but during that time there was that God tore the veil. Tore the veil, which is, is his way. Remember, from the Garden of Eden to the tabernacle to the temple Solomon built to Christ coming in a body 
Every part of it is our Father's desire to dwell with us. That's the point of the covenant we talked about, that we would be his people and he would be our God. All of the priesthood of Jesus is about one primary thing, how we can have relation, God can have relation with sinful people, that we can be redeemed and forgiven. The whole point of the new covenant was to cause us to be able to have a relationship. Our sins are forgiven. We know God personally. So <clears throat> the tabernacle was a place that one or two or few men were able to meet with God representing the nation. Now with the veil rent, mm -hmm. we're all invited to draw near to God. What a, what a gift. What a, what a beautiful thing. So now we're in the Holy of Holies. Incense is filling the room. They've come in with blood once a year. And what do they see when they come in? Uh, in verse, uh, uh, verse 4, <clears throat> which had the golden altar of incense and the golden covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the, the jar of manna, Aaron's rod, and tables of stone. And then these angelic beings called cherubim that were, you know, you've seen, most of you saw Raiders of the Lost yeah. Ark. Yeah. And they really did a good yeah, job. Yeah, that, that was uh, probably pretty much what it was like. Yeah, it could I, in my mind, I don't think you yeah. could have displayed it anymore with the angels showing. They cover their faces. Cover the, their faces. The they're, 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 so you've got this box that God would have, and it's got a gold lid called the mercy seat. This is the holiest. This is the, you know, when remember on Mother's Day, and you preached on uh, uh, Jesus, our great high priest, what was he seated upon? In Hebrews 4. The mercy seat? Yeah, he was seated on that mm -hmm. throne called the throne yes. of grace. grace. Yes. And, and you're seeing this box that may seem, well, it's just a box, gold overlaid, and got stuff inside of it. It's got this, but you're looking at the throne of God. It's representative. It's representative of Jesus who yeah, came. Yeah, if anybody seat. walked in there other than a priest, they didn't live. They'd die. Yeah. It, or if the I priest mean, screwed up. Yeah, he would die. He would and die. And they would have to get a new priest. Yeah. So it, it was just uh, the fact of that place was just so holy with the presence of God, with that ark representing who he was. And we take it so flippantly. It's like, yeah. oh, let's pray. Yeah, Jesus. Let's worship. Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Let me sit my colleague. Yep. Oh, I'm at home watching online. And, yeah, we're worshiping. And, you know, I've got, you know, I've got checking my, you know, my, my Facebook and social media. You know, I'm telling you, that that's not how they worshiped in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. And that's not how we should worship today. Now, I'm not saying we should have some bondage, you know, heaviness, but... No, but there was a holy reverence. There was a re Take there your a, shoes off. You're was, on holy ground. This is God. This we got is God's God. here. You're dealing yeah. with radioactive material. I mean, you're talking about... Yeah, there was no messing around playing. There was no, like, you know, we're going to... One yeah. priest decided he'd burn his incense. He'd just burn it however he wanted. He made his own ingredients, and he got struck dead. And God said, no, you're going to do this exactly the way I tell you. Why was it so important? Because it represented Jesus. And, and they had to get it right. God had to share the, the, the standards because everything we're looking at is pictures or types of what is in the spirit realm in heaven. There will be a place of worship and the presence of God. And he's going to bring that to earth and the new heavens and the new earth. But my favorite part of all, the, 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 I love the bread, mm -hmm. I love the candle, I love the prayer incense, I, I, I love the angels, the cherubim, mm -hmm. I love the box and you know, containing things of God's prov provision. But what I love the most, my favorite part, is the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. saying, Go, because the box inside represented man's sinfulness, broken commandments rebellion against Aaron, that God had to let his rod bud, their bitterness about manna and God's provision. So inside that box represents our failure, our brokenness, our weaknesses, our, our inability to keep the covenant. But then there's the lid of gold. And what did he put on it? The blood. Nothing but the blood. Of they would take the blood and they would cover, of course they covered every article, but they, they put the blood on the mercy seat. And how does it, the NIV translate 
mercy seat here as uh, the atonement cover, which is basically saying, translating mercy, is it's the place where God's mercy kisses his righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Justice and mercy are met. The blood covered the brokenness of man mm. and redeems us. What difference does that make to us to worship, to know that Jesus is our mercy seat? He's that place where we can meet God in that righteousness and mercy kiss in Jesus. He's our mercy seat. He's the place we find grace. And I, 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 I'm so grateful he didn't call this the judgment seat or the great white ark or the the uh, uh, Hebrews 4, that, mm -hmm. that Jesus, our great high priest, who sits upon the throne of law. Well, it would have been yeah. had it not been for Jesus. Yeah. He met those qualifications. He met those standards for us. We could have never met them in no matter how many priests there were, how many sacrifices, how many things, they candles they lit, if it had not been for the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why that blood was so important when it went in there and it went in there the right way. And when they had that sacrifice that they would bring in, it had to be without blemish, mm -hmm. you know, with, with perfect, uh, representing totally Jesus Christ, that there was perfection, no sin in him. And that because of that, we, you mm. get to come in to the, not just the outer court, not just the inner court, but the holy of holies. Where God is. The veil has been rent, nothing. If you have Jesus Christ in your life, nothing can keep you. That's the very presence of God. Right. And I think that's why he gives us the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit, you know, I, I tend to think that candle was in there. The light was in there. Uh, representing, you know, the completion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three of them. You've got the Father represented and the blood of Jesus represented, the Spirit of God represented. They're all there. I mean, you can't re, re if you'll reread in Exodus where God gives him all, and there's so much more detail, if you start seeing Jesus, it takes it from being, wow, they're building this wild boy. God sure seemed to worry about do this, do that. But once you start seeing Jesus, it, it just liberates. It's, it becomes exciting reading because when they get done setting up, you know, when he ends uh, Exodus and they, they set the tabernacle up, they get every furniture, they do everything, play, they do the sacrifice. The Bible says the glory of the Lord came in. The Shekinah, Shekinah. glory. The word Shekinah means the, the dwelling presence of God. It's not just God's everywhere. Yes but he, he shows up sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere, but when he shows up, it's his Shekinah. It's the dwelling glory of God. And he filled it, it was so thick that they, they couldn't even minister uh, in there. Can you imagine that? Man, I mean, and, and, and we get taste of this when we worship. I'm glad to be part of a worshiping church. Yes. And I don't want to beat on anybody here but I just want to, I want to exhort you that whether you're online and worship, make it sacred. Put mm -hmm. your, you know, just make it a, a time where you, you, engage, you put your coffee down. Now there's a place for coffee and I know you have quiet time and I can drink, drink coffee and have a quiet time with you. But there's a place where you put everything aside and you, you worship this God that, that came to dwell tabernacle among us. All this furniture was just draws to him was to bring us closer to him. So he comes, Jesus comes in a body that represents all, to, to bring us closer to God. And then there's this living, this spiritual temple in, in heaven that God dwells in. And I, I, I don't know, what, but we get to go into his presence there. I, mean, I can't imagine what that's going to be like. Mm -hmm. But it's, Eye has not seen mm. nor ear heard <laughs> what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm. He's, a, he's amazing that he could take something as simple as a, as a piece of bread and reflect himself in it or a, a, an incense mm. or, you know. So, so know that God wants to dwell with you. That's the message of the tabernacle. That's the message of the new covenant. That's the message of Jesus as our high priest. 
that God wants to draw near to you and he wants you to draw near to him. But let's don't take it lightly. That doesn't mean you overwhelm and you get all bound up and you can't enjoy God. And you know, remember, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't enter in because I'm a good man. I enter in because mm -hmm. of the good blood of Jesus, his sacrifice. He's paid the price. That mercy seat is covered. The broken laws have been washed. He, he's redeemed us. The, the blood on that gold seat has given us peace with God, access to God. God is satisfied. He's satisfied. And actually, that's one of the words for mercy seat, that it has the uh, uh, implication of, of, of propitiation. It's a big word that just, it's that God's justice has been appeased. It's been satisfied. Yeah. So God, it's not that there wasn't justice. Yes. But it, it Justice has, was done through Christ. Right, but it was satisfied through his sacrifice. He couldn't forgive without a sacrifice. No, no. And he couldn't and forgive without perfect. people don't often think about that or know that, you know, he's just supposed to be a loving God. And can he just Why say, can't I he just you? love everybody and forgive everybody? And it's wonderful because he's God. <laughs> and he's and just. He he's just. He required a sacrifice, and, and you and I can't provide that. None of the animals um, were good enough. No. There would be rivers of blood would never have been yeah. enough. It took his perfect son. But because he loved us so much, that's why he provided that, so that we could. He really loved us so much that he gave his son that we could, we could be with him and dwell with him for all eternity. Right. Um, that blows mm. my mind mm. that he even wants to, mm. you know. He but wants to meet us. Not only does he want to, but he provided a way. A way. And that Jesus was willing to do that uh, for sinful mm. man that spit Hallelujah. upon him and mocked him. God is good. Yes. Well, take us into the holy place and let's uh, mm. praise him and pray mm. and thank God for this time and journeying through the tabernacle. Yes. Father, we thank you so much, Lord. We're just reminded afresh uh, through this, your word, Lord. We're reminded afresh of the, the goodness of your love and your mercy, Father. We're, th we're thankful for you, Jesus, for your blood that was shed for us, Father, your sacrifice, your suffering uh, that was so great and wonderful that we could taste of life. We could actually mm. come into that tabernacle place with you and, mm. and experience tasting the real bread of life yes, and the, the cup of yes, wine that came from your blood, Lord, and the, yes. the candlestick that reminds us, Father, mm. of the beautiful illumination and darkness that, mm. boy, Father, we would just, as you know, would be so overwhelmed by darkness, but you have illuminated our lives with your blood, with your light. You've strengthened us with the bread of life and with your word. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We don't want to take it lightly or mm. be neglectful of it in any way, Father, that we're going to meet you sooner than later, and we're going to stand before you in that, mm. that eternal tabernacle, Father, in mm. heaven. And we want to live our lives accordingly here, Father, that we might please you, that we might be ready. We'd be reminded that we're just dwellers here. We're just pilgrims here. This is not our home. This is not our, our life ultimately. So, Father, keep us aware of that. And again, Father, we worship you and praise you for who you are, mighty and awesome God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless.